And if you want to miss another video, make sure to subscribe and turn on the bell so you receive notifications. Today I will be teaching you how to use Panzoid. So let's get into it. First, you want to click Clipmaker here. This will take you into the 2D forward slash 3D animation tool. When you're in this tool, you have this, you don't have to do anything with this, you can ignore this whole window. But obviously it's going to bring up some presets you can select. You can select them if you want, but we're going to do it from scratch. So let's click this right here with a tick. This is where you can set your settings for your video. If I want to set it to 4K, I can set it to 4K, but I'm going to keep this in 1080p. I can also set it to 60 frames per second if that's preferred, versus the A. And this length thing, this sets the length of the whole video. So if I set this to 10 seconds, my intro will be 10 seconds long. But you've got to set 0.3 more than normal because it cuts that 0.3 off. So if you set it to 10 seconds, it will drop down to 9.7 seconds. Now, we'll go to this window where it says Scene. You can press Outdoor and select something. So I could go with Mercury. This one I used in one of my other videos before. The T-Series video, specifically. You can do this land thing, but I don't mess about with that. I just leave that as it is. Go to Objects. Press Add Object, and then you can press on like text. That will add the text right into this maker right here. You can also click on this screen and hold and drag around. That will then take you around the anchor point and wherever. Now, if you click this text, you can rename it. So I could change my this name on this text to my name. And bam! Press Enter, and that's done. And then you can also set the position for this text. So, like, you want to move this sideways, backwards, anything like that. Or you can do it alternatively through this window itself by clicking on these little points and moving them around. Now this window down here is where you can add your keyframes. Keyframes basically set a motion of a video between one point to another. So we'll show you right here so you get a good understanding of what I mean. If I move this thing around, this is the playback bar, I can move to anywhere I want. Add a keyframe by pressing this plus, and then you can move this around on this keyframe. I can move it backwards. And then versus the first keyframe, that's going to move around because that first keyframe is set right there. I can also press this little view thing, and this will show you the video and how it will look as an actual video rather than an a 3D object. And then you can still do the same thing. It still goes between those two keyframes, and it stops at that keyframe. So if I set like another keyframe here and do something with this keyframe, like I move this down, and we keep moving back through these keyframes, it's going to do that motion. Simple, right. You go to this effect, you go to FX, and you can press Add Effect, and you can add something like a radial blur. Usually, that's probably the one I go with because I don't know. There's so many effects, you can just mess about with them, you'll get the hang of it. So I've added the radial blur, click on the radial blur. You can see right here that it's showing us what it's gonna do. Uh, I can add decay, I can do anything with this, I can even add intensity, density, I can even add weight, and you see what it does. But when we're in this view, we can't see what it does. So do take note of that. You need to change the view if you want to see what it's going to do. You can also set keyframes on this too. So if I wanted something like a keyframe right here, I can press that plus again. On all, I'm going to do it on all of them just because it'll help. And then I can mess about with all of these settings. And obviously do what is necessary. So between those keyframes, it's going to do that motion right there. Easy. You can also click on this camera thing. This one, yeah, it's a little tricky. But it's simple with the keyframes. First keyframe, my camera is where my camera is. I can move along these keyframes and then I can mess about with this camera. Set a keyframe, obviously. Do that first. And I can start messing about with all these settings. So I can put the camera closer, further, anything like that. can even move it to the side. can even set the rotation of the camera. Yes, this is rotating the camera because I can see it in this view, which is useful. And then between these two keyframes, not move the keyframe, between these two keyframes, it's now going to do that motion. Simple. You can even add audio files to this, but I prefer to add my audio afterwards and obviously make the intro first because then I can mess about with it, cut it and do all that stuff. You can even set a fade in, set a fade out. You can set the volume mode and stuff like that for fade in and fade out. And you can obviously set an offset, which, say you set an offset of about one second, then the music will start one second in rather than at the start. And then here in this window, 
you can start rendering that video that you've created. So you could obviously select like your format, your mode. I don't mess about with these though. I usually leave them as they are unless I'm trying to go for something really good. Then I'll go with obviously good quality. But balance is probably best if you're trying to get this done really quickly and then start video render. Now this will take time to obviously render the video. So we're going to have to wait. Now our video is rendered, so obviously we can press download your video. This will then take us to this page to download said video. And it will obviously just pop up in your video bar, so that's easy as right. You can click that, click showing folder, and then you can find this video there, play that video, and you can see how it came out, and it'll come out exactly as that view you had inside Panzoid itself. So that's why that view was useful to have on. And there you go. The intro is done. Simple. Obviously, you've got to mess about and do whatever you want to do. But you can see for tutorial purposes, this works. And that is the basics of how to make an intro in Panzoid. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like, share this video. Obviously, it will help your friends if they need help using Panzoid and they don't know how to use it. And subscribe if you like the video. Peace.